Another Baltic morning. What's the defender going to do? Good morning. Fence looking nice. Over the Christmas period, I'll maybe do a bit of a kind of review one year on of the shed. It's about a year and a half, but we'll title it one year on. What we like about the shed, what we don't like about the shed, what we would have done differently. Would we have done it now with the price of steel and concrete? Blah, blah, blah. We five minute talk about the shed. Anyway, Kev's just coming down. I'm gonna grab these gates. We need more gates up at the cows to segregate them. We'll get these up to the castle shed up there. That's the point I've just spotted on the front of there. The hydraulic oil's a wee bit low since we had the leak yesterday. Get it topped up. Right, we've penned this section off. We'll bring all the cows into here and then we can get the dung out of there. I cannot wait till we've got a purpose-built cattle shed up with permanent race, permanent pens. Oh, it's gonna be bliss. Just setting up pens, moving things about, it just takes so much more time than you think. Whereas if you've got a permanent system, you just boom, open a gate, muck it out, away you go. Same with the handling system, permanent handling system. The cattle also get used to a permanent handling system. They know where it is, they know how it moves. It's so much more efficient, so much quicker. Cows are all penned off. That's the patch that's to be taken out. They're in like sardines in there. That's the first load. Should get Kev reversed in here now to load him. It's not that deep, so the bucket's doing a better job than the grape would. Okay, there's a wee bit left over there to do. I need to disappear, so I'm gonna leave Kev to finish that bit off there. Gate lady's returned. Is she gonna figure out the lights? They're on your left. Look at that for a sky. Corker. Good morning, today's entertainment, snow. It is flipping deep. There you go, that's how deep it is. We'll get a couple of cattle fed and then we'll get in the forklift and just start clearing snow. Most important bit of snow is at the shop, getting all the car parts cleared, getting that all sorted out. Woman of wonder, gone into the night, all has been forgiven. Empty this bucket so we can use it to shift snow. That's all the cattle fed here this yard. It's not far off, a mile long farm track this. Then the door doesn't shut. And the heating doesn't work. We love it, we love it. Neighbours doing the exact same, clearing snow. Just need to clear a couple of passing points and then this yard's done and dusted. You can see the road there, I've cut the road, that's fine. Take a wee passing point here and that'll do us. I was going to say one yard done, but one yard half arsed. There's a track through the middle of it. See how slippy it is today. It is lethal slippy. It's that tiny layer of compact snow. It's almost more slippy than a sheet of ice. I left my flipping window open. Uh, ah, yeah, they're useless windows, these. Used to be a lot easier in here because we didn't have all those boxes there. We didn't have all this lights and boxes there. So you could do all this with a forklift. No shovels, all forklift action. Pulling a box out of here, nudging it out of the road so we can get in there with a the of bucket. Oh, doesn't that look cosy? Oh. We take rain over snow, shop wise, because because you get rain all the time, everyone's used to driving in the rain. It's not really much of a, unless it's 
wild, wild rain, but this would just be normal rain if it wasn't cold. And then you wouldn't lose much many people that come to the shop normally, but when it turns to snow, it's a lot different the driving conditions. People aren't as confident in the snow as they are the rain. So a snow day is always a very quiet day in the farm shop. And also then you've got your normal staff numbers come in. You've got less than half the customers coming through the doors, so you kind of have to mix and match. And it just puts everything askew and messes with the schedules. And just, ah, we don't like snow right here. Since Dad first cleared all the roads this morning, it's now 10 to 10 and there's probably been another inch falling, so it's just a waste of a day. This is the old bucket. Basically, the new bucket we only try and use for grain or wood chip. And this gets used and abused. I think there's a dung spreader around here. Yeah. That was the plan today, we'll get that going and spread some dung, but this has taken up our time. Go. Big K2 spreader. We'll maybe get going this afternoon, who knows. Sparkies are here. I'll well, fill them in, put snow around the van. Go on, grub. Oh, this is frozen to the ground. Not anymore. The Highlanders, they're hardy as anything, they'll not be fussed by the snow at all. Euro should be in, he's an Angus, he should be fairly hardy. Anyway, he's getting his grub, that's most important. We've obviously not got access to grass now. Make sure they get this grub and they've got straw over there, so they're content. Just getting around about the shop here, clear as best we can. Hell of a snow, Jesus. Suitable for the weather. Dump over here, there's a pond in here. Dad's already cleared all this, but it's, it's still snowing fairly heavy, so it didn't take long to fill in again. thing that is so frustrating with snow, you spend all day shifting snow out the road and then it melts the next day and it's gone. Frustrating stuff. Anyway, has to be done. Not much else you can do. If you don't do it before the cars run on it, it makes it even worse. Because it packs in harder and you can never pick it up again with a bucket. There's a salesman leaving. A happy salesman. A shiny toy might have been ordered. I'm at the bottom of this big hopper, which is for the hens. There you go. They had a wee bit of it had gunged up, and I think what had happened is that, that had frozen, and there's a motor that sits inside, and it rotates that auger, and the motor, because this end had frozen solid, the motor had rotated up the way, and there was feed going everywhere. I'm just getting this unchoked, which I'm just about done. Just crashed the drone somewhere into that tree. <sighs> Great. Here we go, up the tree we go. Oh. Wasn't even up the tree. It wasn't even in the bloody tree. The way it stabilizes itself, this camera's on a wee gimbal, it sits in there, it's all really loose and loosey goosey and that's that joint there's popped out of there so let me see if i can watch a few youtube videos but ah that was a tree we hit and i've just been up to the top of it only to realize the drone was lying on the ground there right it's all clicked back together there was a wee casing on the edge here that had gone missing i managed to find it in the snow 
So that's covered up the exposed wires and I've clicked it back into place and it seemed to click not too bad. This is bent a wee bit. Uh, you can see it's not sitting flush like that side does, the wee joint. All that is is for landing. It's a bit of a stay so it can land and then there's a wee LED that flashes there. So that should be okay. Just fingers crossed it's working because it's a brilliant, honestly, it's a brilliant wee thing. I had it on stupidly. I didn't even really realise, but it's got... It's got three different modes and sport mode goes really fast. It'll fly fast, but it disables all the sensors on it. So it can sense where objects are, but not if you've got it in sport mode. And I don't know why, it was still in sport mode from the last time I was using it. Um, I must've been flying it fast last time. If you ain't first, you're last. This is thawed out a wee bit and it's now just a sheet of ice. Just about fell over, Jesus. Kez has been away, he got a load of wood chip, so he's putting that into the hopper. So just going to clear up the last of it. Does the fence suit the snow? Sorting out feeders, keeping these crews happy. You can guess what job's on tonight. Three stuffed in the back. Anyway, cheers for watching. I will see you tomorrow.